Firebase makes user authentication incredibly easy to implement in Angular, but the one drawback is that it's not easy to implement custom data on the auth object itself. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to implement an OAuth system from scratch using Angular Fire version 5, and also save custom user data to the Firestore database. In addition, we're going to set up a router guard that will prevent unauthorized users from accessing certain routes. I recommend that you follow along with the source code on angularfirebase.com, and make sure to subscribe to the channel for a bunch of updates regarding Firestore in the near future. To get started, the first thing you'll need is a Firebase account, and make sure you have the Google login provider enabled. I'm also assuming that you have an existing Angular project with Angular Fire installed. If not, go to the Angular Fire docs and follow the setup instructions for version 5. The first thing I'm going to do is create a core module, which is used in Angular to handle global services within your app, such as authentication. The core module is technically optional, but it is considered a good practice. Once you have it generated, add it to the import section of the app module. Then we can jump over to the core module and we'll add Angular Fire Auth and Angular Fire Store. I also have an auth service in here, which we're going to generate in the next step. The auth service is going to handle most of the heavy lifting. When you generate it, make sure to use the M flag so it gets added to the core module automatically. Inside of our service, we're going to import the Angular router as well as the Angular Fire Auth and Firestore services. We're also going to use the RxJS observable class and the switch map operator, as you'll see here in just a second. The nice thing about our service is we can define an interface with any custom data that we want to add to it. So here I'm going to add a user interface, and I'll just add a few default values here that come with the normal Firebase Auth state. And then I'll also add a custom attribute for favorite color, but you could add anything you want here. Then the next thing we'll do is set a variable on the service that is typed to this user interface. From there, we can add our dependencies to the constructor, which is auth, firestore, and the router. Then we want to define the user observable inside the constructor so any component can subscribe to it and be updated with new data in real time. So first we need the data from the default auth state from Firebase. So we can get that by calling switch map. That will give us the user credential, which can be either the user data or null. So if it is defined, then we'll go ahead and return the data that we save in the Firestore database. So we can do that by pointing Angular Firestore to the user document that is in the user's collection and has an ID equal to their user ID. And then we call value changes on it to get the observable. And just so this makes a little more sense, let's look at how we have the database structured. We have a root users collection, and then each document in that collection has an ID equal to the Firebase auth user ID. This allows you to add custom data to your users and also query them using the Firestore query methods. So switching back to the service, now we just want to return an observable of null if that user object is not defined. So the end result here is we're using data from Firestore instead of the data returned from Firebase Auth. So the next thing we'll do here is create a method for the user to log in with Google. And I'm going to set this up in a way so you can easily reuse the code if you want to use multiple methods such as Twitter, GitHub, or Facebook. We can do that by passing the provider to this OAuth login method, and that will call the sign in with pop-up and return a promise. But we also need to save the user's initial data in the database, so we'll set up a separate method for that as well. And we only want to call that once the user has successfully authenticated through Firebase. So once the user has authenticated, we're going to have a user ID. We can use that user ID to make a reference to the Firestore users collection and then a document under that user ID. From there, I'm just going to transfer some data from the normal Firebase auth to Firestore, but this is where you have the option to set custom data if you want to. You could even delay this process and have the user fill out a secondary form where they enter required additional fields to their user account. To save the data, we just need to call user ref, set data, and we're good to go. The service is ready to authenticate users, we just need a component to make this possible on the front end. I'm going to generate a component called user profile, and then we'll just need to inject the auth service into this component. Make sure that it's public when you add it to the constructor so you can use it in the HTML. We want to display different HTML based on whether or not the user is authenticated. We can figure that out by using ngif with the user variable from our auth service and the async pipe. If the user is authenticated, it emits their data from Firestore, but if not, it just emits null. From there, we're going to set up two different templates based on the authenticated state. The first one we'll call authenticated, the other one we'll call guest. Based on that state, it will replace this div with the templates that we defined below. 
we can set those templates with ng template and then a hashtag followed by the template variable name. In the guest template, I'll just show that the user is a guest, and then I'll add a button that will trigger the Google login method from our service when clicked. Inside the authenticated template, I'm just going to set the user as a template variable so we can use that data from the observable. So we do that by calling auth user async and then as user, which represents the template variable. So then we can call user display name or user photo URL or any other custom data that you have in Firestore. So now let's go see this in action. We click the connect to Google button here and that should bring up an OAuth window. And then once we're authenticated, we'll see that our data is updated in Firestore. Currently, I don't have the favorite color property set, but we'll go ahead and set that in Firestore and you'll see it has a real-time connection with the user interface. As soon as we click add, you'll see that the favorite color gets updated here on the left side on the user interface. If we click log out, you can see the user session ends, but we still have the data here persisted in Firestore. So that's very useful if you query public user profiles that get shown throughout your app. So that's pretty cool, but there's just one more piece of information I want to show you to round out your auth service. And that's how to create a router guard to protect routes from unauthorized users. So first we'll generate the guard with the Angular CLI. Inside the guard, we're going to import an RxJS observable class and the auth service that we just created, and also a few other RxJS operators. From there, we'll add the auth service to the constructor of the guard, and we can just call the user observable that we had created in the auth service. We can call take one to prevent any long running subscriptions, and then we'll map the user object down to a Boolean. So if the user's logged in, that should return true, and if not, it'll return false. If it returns true, then the guard will pass and they'll be able to access the route. But if false, it will console log access denied, and then we'll have the router navigate them back to the login page. So you can add this guard to the can activate array in any of your routes, and then if you try to access one of those routes not being logged in, you'll get this access denied message here in the console. But if we go ahead and log in, then you can see we have full access to the routes and everything works as expected. That's it for Firebase OAuth with Firestore. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to build more advanced features, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get a free copy of my book as well as one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.